Okay, so in this video, we will discuss the comparison theorem in the case of improper integrals of non-negative functions. And so the idea is this. Sometimes when you deal with an improper integral, you don't care so much as to what the value may be, but you only want to figure out whether the improper integral converges or diverges. The problem is that some of these integrals can be rather complicated, and then it is necessary to figure out convergence or divergence to compare them with much simpler integrals. And that is the idea behind the comparison theorem. And you'll see that it is a very intuitive statement because essentially when you integrate over any kind of interval a non-negative function what you obtain is the area below this curve over the interval and there are only two possibilities either the area is finite so the improper integral converges or the area is infinite in which case the improper integral diverges and that is really the essence of the comparison theorem when dealing with improper integrals of non-negative functions. So here's the statement, and then you'll appreciate why it is so intuitive. So a few assumptions. So we assume that we have two functions, and they're both non-negative, and suppose that g of x is at least as big as h of x. So that's the first assumption. We pick our two functions. They're both non-negative, and g is bigger than or equal to f. Then we'll take a to be a real number or union. We can allow a to be negative infinity. So we're saying here a is a member of the given set being all real numbers and including negative infinity. And our third element is b, which is also either a real number or positive infinity. So these are the three ingredients. A is a real number and can also be negative infinity. B is a real number and can also be positive infinity. F and G are non-negative functions. G is greater than F. Well, we know that integration is monotonic. Therefore, when you have non-negative functions, the larger the function, the greater the integral. So, if you visualize this, and we'll assume just for the simplicity of the picture that A and B are finite, so you could have here, say, A being positive and B being positive as well. You could have, say, Y equals F of X, and G is at least as big as F. So you could have g something like this. And the idea will be to compare the integral of f over the the integral of f over the interval from a to b. Well, if you think of this geometrically again, as the function is assumed to be non-negative, this is the area below the curve. And you can look now at the integral of g from a to b. And one thing should be apparent. The area below the curve, y equals g of x over the interval from a to b, will be greater than the area below the curve y equals f of x, as the curve g is above the curve f. So we'll get all of the area of f and what's extra. So this is clearly true because f is at most g, the integral of f over the interval is at most the integral of g over the interval. And from this we can state the two possible conclusions of the comparison theorem and again both conclusions are very intuitive simply from this simple observation. So we have a, our first possible conclusion, so if the integral converges, so the integral of g, 
and notice that because f is not negative, the integral of f from a to b is also at least 0. Because you either have no area or some area, so it's at least as big as 0. So now if the integral of g from a to b converges, then automatically the integral of f from a to b also converges. That is the first possibility. B, what if the integral of f diverges? Then, it must be true that the integral of g will also diverge. And this is the statement of the comparison theorem. And let's explain why a and b are so intuitive. And you could have easily come up with this on your own. So here's the intuition. The intuition first for A. So now think of it. Whether or not A is negative infinity or B is positive infinity or they're both negative and positive infinity, the integral of g from a to b as g is non-negative represents an area under a curve, namely y equals g of x. So if this integral converges, this means that in the limit we get a finite area. So the assumption here that the integral converges simply means that this integral is finite. We get some positive area. So the integral from a to b of g of x is finite by assumption. But now think of it, by assumption, the integral of g was bigger than the integral of f. So if this is less than infinity, and the integral of f is smaller than the integral of g, well, the integral of f must also be smaller than infinity. So we have, as a direct consequence, that the integral of f is also finite. But again, the integral of f from a to b represents geometrically the area below the curve y equals f of x. And so if the area is finite, clearly the integral of f from a to b converges as well. So again, very intuitive. Look at the intuition for b, which is equally intuitive. If the integral of f diverges, well, what is the implication? The integral of f from a to b represents the area under the curve. Well, either the area is finite or is infinite. But if the integral is assumed to diverge, it cannot be finite, otherwise it would exist, it would converge. So the only way for this to diverge is if the area is infinite. But now if you go back to our inequality, if the integral of f is infinite and the integral of g is at least as big as the integral of f, then the integral of g must be at least infinity. Well, the only possibility, therefore, is that the integral of g is also infinity. And of course, the area under the g blows up, and so the improper integral diverges as well. So this is really the crux of the idea. You could even ignore the formal statement and really just think of it this way. If the integral of g is finite, so is the integral of f, as it is smaller, therefore you have finite area, this integral converges, check. 
On the other hand, if the integral of f is infinite, well, so is the integral of g as it is larger. Therefore, this is infinite. Therefore, diverges as well. And that's it.